Good morning from the banks of Windermere. Another cracker this morning. It's, uh, it was forecast heavy fog. It's not really heavy fog, but there's a kind of soft mistiness to the scene. And I was actually driving to sort of um, the Coniston area. And as I'm driving, I saw this scene down at the Bolting Marina in Windermere. And I just had to stop and grab, grab a couple of pictures. It's got that same sort of soft, ethereal feel as the pictures from Thirlmere yesterday and I love this kind of imagery and there's just a couple of islands um, that you can see and I can just see the distant fells as well very soft just sort of appearing through the cloud and it's lovely I want to show you what I'm doing there we go these are the islands there and I'm just zooming in you're getting used to what I do now 70 to 200 shooting pretty much at 200 mil, zooming in. I'll be shooting some at about maybe 120 mil also, just to get both islands in. People like to know what camera settings I'm using. So in these conditions with no filters or anything like that, ISO 100, F11 is giving me a fifth of a second and that's perfect. There's a couple of nice little boats just rolling in now. Look at these boats here, just coming in. That'd actually make a nice shot that. But I've not got time to take it, so you can just look at it here as I compose it. Beautiful, that. It would have made a good on that, but what can you do? So I'm going to move on to Coniston anyway. I'll see you later. Right, I've moved on. I checked out that area around Windermere and to be honest, the conditions weren't great. It was all a bit flat. So I decided to come back to Thirlmere. It's something that I do a lot, checking out different areas again and again and again, you know, returning to the same place. That's how you really build up an intimate knowledge of one location or one set of locations. You know, I've just stopped at a lay-by. There's lots of lay-bys on the side of Thirlmere for you to just pull in and there's little gates and paths to walk down. It's great for landscape photography. And so I'm just wrecking a new spot. It's somewhere I didn't get to stop at yesterday. And I found a nice little composition that I think works quite well. I'll show it you. Got some lovely clouds. And it's this headland here with that tree sticking out. Love, and then there's just that light on those fells that really lifts the composition. I'm photographing it using my 70 to 200, so I'm zooming in at 200 mil just to really make a feature of that tree that's sticking out because that's going to be pin sharp, lovely detail, and then with a nice light on those fells and a bit of texture in that sky, I think it's a really nice image. I don't know what's going to happen today. The forecast seems so sketchy. They don't really seem to know. They're saying mist, the same cloud. There's a bit of sunshine coming. So I'll just go with the flow and see what happens. I'm going to work my way further down Thirlmere to the similar places I visited yesterday. I might walk up high again, uh, but it's looking lovely. And it's just part of me wrecking the place and getting to really know it so that I can come back in different conditions, you know, and know the area. So I'll just crack on and see what else I can get. Right, I've driven north and I've come to Derwent Water. I'm at a place called Crow Park. You'll recognise it as soon as I show it you. If you don't know it just from the name, it's a classic composition. It's the semi-submerged gate and it leads out to that island. And it's fantastic shot at dawn. Just as the sun rises, it illuminates the island and you get that beautiful ethereal feel. And it's, uh, it's a lovely shot. I'm not shooting it, I've shot it in the past, but uh, there's not really enough water to get the nice reflections of the gate at the moment. But we've got some lovely soft light in the distance. The distant fells are just receding back beautifully. And I'm on the 70 to 200 again. I've probably shot near enough every, every image on this whole trip using this lens. 
but I love the compression that it gives in misty conditions and it is just the distant fells right out there that's what I'm photographing the island's pretty dark and I'm using a 0.9 hard grad which is uh, is just helping with that sky because it's pretty contrasty and I'm also I've shot using a six stop filter and a ten stop filter just using different shutter speeds anything from sort of six seconds up to 30 seconds I'd like to go a bit longer to be honest but my cable release is broke and I've not got a spare so 30 seconds is your limit on the 5d mark III but it's lovely I think I've got a really nice shot there the clouds are coming down at a really pleasing angle just just creating a nice composition and there's a bolt sitting exactly where I'd place it if I could position it that's exactly where it'd be so I think it's gonna be a nice image of that contrasty and quite graphic but beautiful so I'm gonna walk on a bit further down the lake we'll forecast for a bit more sun for the next hour or so and then clouds so I'm probably going to head home at maybe one o'clock or something like that but I've got a window of opportunity now maybe an hour to get a few more shots so I'm gonna crack on I've got quite an interesting little shot here it's a scots pine hardly came out of crow park and i saw this image straight away uh, it's got some lovely side light on it and there's little bits of light on the distant fells uh, fantastic little shot again at 200 mil i'm zooming in on it and i'll show you what i'm shooting so this is the scene these are where the uh the steamers or the ferries whatever they are ship people about and there's the tree over there on the island just on the headland love it i think it's a scots pine it makes a really nice little composition uh, never photographed that before because it's never i've been to derwent water lots of times but it's never probably never been lit in this way uh, and never stood out to me but i saw it straight away i thought oh, i've got to grab a picture of that and uh, i just thought i'd obviously stop do a bit of video just to let you know what i'm up to before i carry on Seems like the light's passed. That's okay, I knew it was gonna. I've got a lovely composition here. It's really interesting. It's a bit of a squeeze to get in, as you can see, I'm kind of in the undergrowth. There's like brambles and bits of trees and stuff, but you can kind of work your way in between them. And this photograph, I've shot it two ways. Like before, I've shot it on a long exposure and I've shot it with a fast shutter speed. I don't know which I prefer. I'm gonna show both on the video and you make your mind up here we are long lens again it's those sticks just those posts in the water and the nice way they're arranged and this shot is all about being in the critical position a little bit to the left they're all the sort of crossing and overlapping a little bit to the right it's no good and you've got to get your height right and everything so I spent a bit of time and I've sort of come to the conclusion this is the spot and I don't know which I like I love that minimal shot about 30 second exposure with the reflections just blurred out and everything just white behind very surreal but then on a fast shutter speed the reflections are lovely today there's a great ripple on the water and it creates these gorgeous abstract shapes so it's the kind of thing I just can't judge on the back of the camera I've got to get home to see which one I prefer but like I say I'll put both on the video and you tell me which do you prefer you know long exposure or with uh, a bit of an abstract reflection you decide Hello, I'm at my final destination for the day and I've been talking about shoot your own stuff, make your own shots and all that stuff. I'm shooting a classic, Friars Crag. <laughs> it's shot all the time and I just love it. I just wanted to shoot it, so that's it. For those of you who have never been here, 
it's fantastic it just the composition is just superb it's this fence that runs out into the water and the great thing about it is all this weed that sort of gets stuck to the well it's not even barbed wire just to the metal section and it creates a fantastic lead in and then between the valleys there's sort of uh, just that peak that sits there in conditions like this long exposure 30 seconds polarizer just playing with it a little bit turning it on and off uh, 0.9 grad great i've been here for about 20 minutes half an hour just shooting different shots the lights changing the clouds are moving and uh oh, it's fantastic i love this kind of, Im of image and that's why it's shot so much and i've actually never shot this before i've been here lots of times like i say but the conditions have never been right for it because i've seen so many great shots from here when i've been in the past and the conditions have been like oh my, mine will just be a poor shot but i couldn't turn it down today this is just lovely and uh, i think you're going to enjoy these Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed putting it together. It's been fantastic. I, I'm, I've never needed motivation to get out landscaping. I've always loved it. But now I've started doing the vlogging, if anything, it's given me even more motivation to get out because I'm not just shooting photographs. I'm creating video to try and inspire other people to get out and just see this fantastic country that we live in and all the amazing landscapes that there are. You do your best you try and get a good shot but you never fail because just being out in this in these uh so, you know i'm out by derwent water like this in the middle of winter it's a win <laughs> even if you get nothing even if you've card formats you know you've won so i just wanted to try and tell people to get out and try it yourself if you're not a landscape photographer join your local photographic society or camera club and meet like-minded people and get out there and learn it it's great if you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. And if you're one of my regular subscribers, thanks for all your support. Love all the comments, love the interaction, all that kind of stuff. And I love the positivity, uh, it's great. And if you could share it, that'd be really helpful to me. You know, put it on Facebook or share it on whatever platform. And just to let your friends know about it, that there's a fantastic photographer sharing his locations and knowledge you know, and just tell them that they can come and soak in my charisma. <laughs> it's been great having you with me anyway, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.